Heavenly Father, we come right now, God. We just thank you um, for this day. We thank you for healing. We thank you for blessings. And we ask you to open our minds to this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so the last time we were here, we were in chapter 4, right? Right. And we just got there. Yeah, chapter 4. Yeah, chapter 4 we left off in um, verse 15. Um, but we were talking about... Um, Sabat, uh, um, thank you, um, Tobiah Tab and Gershom, mm -hmm. and they were all um, trying to attempt to stop uh, Nehemiah's work. And so, um, when we left off, Nehemiah had to uh, basically do, uh, put a system together to allow the people to cover uh, each other. And we were going to learn more about that in um, Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 15. So, Miss Alicia, can you start reading at verse 15 for me, please? And it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God had brought their counsel to nothing, that we returned all of us to the wall, everyone to his work. So, and basically, um, they said when they found out, the enemies found out, that we know what you finna do <laughs> and your plan ain't gonna work, we're gonna continue to work. Because what they thought was they was gonna get afraid and be left vulnerable. Go ahead. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work, and the other half of them held the spears and shields, the shields and the bows, and the coats of mail, and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. They who built on the wall and they who bore burdens burdened themselves. Everyone with one of his hands wrought in the work and with the other hand held a weapon. For the builders, everyone had his sword girded by his side and so built it. And he who sounded the trumpet was by me. 19. And I said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, the work is great and large, and we are separated upon the wall, one far from another. And whatever place you hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye there unto us. Our God shall fight for us. So 17 and 20 talk about burden bearers. Um, we talk about, we say God is a burden bearer. But in this context, they, they were people that kept up the we uh, weapons while the other people worked. Um, and then he also talked about the horn blower. Um, they were, um, it, it, they blew the horn if, um, an attack and it, the uh, note says that's like 500 feet away from each location. So they spread it out so they can to hear and see if y'all needed to come and protect and where we're protecting. So Nehemiah not only was a cup bearer, but he was an excellent leader because he figured out a way to use his resources, remember he had security, to allow the people to build and also protect what the work they were doing. And that was pretty smart because most people would have flinched and said, oh, it's time for me to go. We're we going to stop work, right? Go ahead. So we labored in the work, and half of them held the spirits from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. Likewise, at the same time, said I unto the people, let everyone with his servant lodge within Jerusalem, that in the night they might they may be a guard to us and labor in the day. So neither I, nor my brethren, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard who followed me, none of us put off our clothes, except that everyone put them off for washing. So everybody took, basically he said everybody took a shift. So we didn't go and go to sleep and rest. Everybody took shifts to protect the work, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to, um, mind you, we had, they were, they had all these people against them. So now in chapter five, we're going to be talking about um, oppression. And so I'm going to think about this as if um, they were filing a lawsuit against, or presenting a lawsuit to Nehemiah, that the complaint is they were being oppressed um, the Jews were being oppressed by their own people. So oppression of Jews by the Jews. Okay? So we're going to go into chapter 5. 
and we are going to start talking about what is actually going on. Go ahead. And there was a great cry of the people and of their wives against their brethren, the Jews. For there were those who said, we are sons and our daughters are many. Therefore, we take up grain for them that we may eat and, not, and live. Some also there were who said, we have mortgaged our lands, vineyards, and houses that we might buy grain because of the famine. There was also those who said, we have borrowed money for the king's tax, and that upon our lands and vineyards, yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children as their, as their children, and lo, we bring into bondage our sons and our daughters to be servants. And some of our daughters are brought into, into bondage already. Neither is it in the, our power to redeem them. For other men have our lands and vineyards. Okay, so what happened was, is this, this is an economic problem. They did not have the food supply to feed all these people. Despite it should have it should have been easy because of the season it was. So they were in a famine, okay? Point out that the farmers had to build the wall so they weren't maintaining their crops, okay? So they had to mortgage the property to get grain. Then on top of that, they had to pay taxes to the Persians, okay? And then the Jewish creditors unscrupulous um loan them money but now they don't they 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 don't even get to benefit from their land so they're like sharecroppers right and then um they got so desperate they had to start say, selling their kids to the jewish creditors mm -hmm. now think about this we just got out of bondage from um a gentile oppressor and now we're going to be oppressed by our own people so this, um, and, and it's to note that this was not only a Jewish issue. Babylon had a problem paying its taxes to Persia as well at this time. So the taxes were high, okay? So as we come along, Nehemiah is upset. And we're going to show how Nehemiah uses the law to get to them. Verse 6. Okay. And I was very angry when I heard their cry in, their, in these words. Then I consulted my, with myself, and I rebuked the nobles and the rulers, and said unto them, Ye exact interest every one of his brothers, and I held a great assembly against them. And I said unto them, We, after <coughs> our ability, have redeemed our brethren, the Jews, who were sold unto the nations, and will ye and will ye even sell your brethren, or how or shall they be sold unto us? Then held they their peace and found nothing to answer. So they, they were silent because they were like, well, we don't know what to do. Let's go to what the law says in Deuteronomy 23, 19 and 20. Say a chapter again. 23. 23. 23. And Steve, you can read that. Uh -huh. You shall not charge interest to your brother, interest on money or food, or anything that is lent out at interest. To a foreigner you may charge interest, but to your brother you shall not charge interest, that the Lord your God may bless you in all to which you set your hand in the land which you are entering to possess. And let's go to 24. 10 through 13. Deuteronomy 24, 10 through 13. 24, starting at 10. Mm -hmm. When you lend to your brother anything, you shall not go into his house to get his pledge. You shall stand outside, and the man to whom you lend shall bring the pledge out to you. And if the man is poor... Say that again. And if the man is what? And if the man is poor... You shall not keep his pledge overnight. You shall, in any case, return the pledge to him again when the sun goes down. 
that he may sleep in his own garment and bless you. And it shall be righteousness to you before the Lord your God. And let's go to Exodus 22. Twenty six through twenty seven. Um, Stacy, can you read that? Yes. Exodus twenty two, twenty six, and twenty seven. If you take your neighbor, start start at twenty five for me, please. Twenty five, and this is the NLT version. If you lend money to any of my people who are in need, do not charge interest as a money lender would. If you take your neighbor's cloak as security for a loan, you must return it before sunset. This coat may be the only blanket your neighbor has. How can a person sleep without it? If you do not return it and your neighbor cries out to me for help, then I will hear for I am merciful. Okay, so basically the law of the Torah, right, of Judah, says that you can you can do interest with the, the other people, but you're not supposed to take a a, um, a mortgage or a property value in these people's property. Right. You, If they poor, you're not supposed to do that. And if they're your brother, you're not supposed to do that, period. Yeah. So even if you take his cloak as his pledge, that's what all you're supposed to take. So mm -hmm. these people are working on the land and not reaping anything on the land having to pay taxes and pay their mortgages, and then they can't afford to pay that, and their kids are going into slavery to their own people. They're doing what uh, Solomon did all over again. Correct. And so it's like, huh? That's your brother. You ain't supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. How are y'all doing that? How are you oppressing your own people? And you know what's funny, man, is we get the, the what's the word, usury, right? Yeah. That's called usury. Usury tax, usury. and that's against the law. You, you, I mean, you know these people ain't got no money. You know they don't have it. And, you know, it's like, it's like to me, it's like rent to own. <laughs> why, why, I mean, to me, like, why would I pay you all this money to get the same thing I can get it cheap on Amazon? Mm -hmm. for, for, for. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's not right. And it, and, and, and here it's saying you don't do that to your brother. That's your brother. Right? Mm -hmm. Um, and let's go to Deuteronomy 24, 17 through 22. Stacy, can you read that for me? Deuteronomy 17. I mean, 24, 17 through 22. Oh. <clears throat> True justice must be given to foreigners living among you and to orphans. And you must never accept a widow's garment as security for her debt. Always remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God redeemed you from your slavery. That is why I have given you this command. So God was like, you need to remember where you came from. Y'all just, they ain't even got to go back. This is, this is what bothers me. They ain't even got to go back to Egypt to remember about how to be enslaved. They just got out of slavery. Right. And they doing this stuff. Um, let's go to Amos two, chapter two, verse six through eight. Brother, can you read that for me, please? Um. Oh, me? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Amos chapter two, verse six through eight, ESV. Thus says the Lord: For three transgressions of Israel. And four, four, I will not revoke the punishment because they sell the righteousness for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals. Those who trample the head of the poor into the dust of the earth and turn aside the way of the afflicted. A man and his father go into the same girl so that my holy name is profane. Mm -hmm. They lay themselves down beside every altar of own garments taken in pledge. And in the house of their God, they drink the wine of those who have been fined. That sounds like what Jesus found, right? Mm -hmm. When he went into the uh, temple, right? The, the storehouse in front of the temple. Um, let's go to Amos 5, 11 and 12. 
I'm starting to hear you at that point. All right. Amos 5, 11 and 12. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and you exact taxes of grain from him, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and turn aside the needy in the gate. So we can see that you can see why when Nehemiah was upset, he was upset because he knows the law and they are doing exactly what God told him not to do. Mm -hmm. So let's go back um, to Nehemiah 5 and let's see what he um, says and how he shows true leadership. Okay. Let's go back to chapter 5. Verse 9. Also I said, the thing that, that, that ye do is not good. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of, of the reproach of the nations, our enemies? I likewise and my brethren and my servants might exact of them money and, and grain. I pray you, let us cease this exacting of interest. So my version says, moreover, and I and my brothers and my servants are lending them money and grain. Let us abandon the exacting of interest. So he's saying, let's stop this. Mm -hmm. You know they ain't got no money. You know they ain't got no food. They ain't got nothing. And you, you, you making it harder on them for no reason. And I'm showing a good example, but I'm lending them money <clears throat> with no interest and not asking them for their property. Go ahead. Restore, I pray you to them, even this day, their lands, their vineyards, their olive tree, their olive yard, and their houses. Also the hundred part of the money and of the grain, the wine, and the oil that ye exact of them. So he said, get them everything back. Get them the, their fields, their vineyards, their olives, the percentage of money that you was getting, the grain, the wine, everything that you took from them, give it back to them. Because that's what the law says. If they poor, if you see people starving and you got all this food, what you going to do with it? And the law says you don't do your brother like that. I'm going to build bigger barns. Huh? I'm going to build bigger barns. Yeah. To store my food in. To store, to, for nobody to eat, to mm -hmm. rot. Mm -hmm. Right. And these are all the people that are. Nobles. Coming, Jewish think, nobles. Okay. So they, they were in captivity. Huh? Were they all in captivity together? Well, I. I, so when you say captivity, you got to think. You don't think of it's not like chattel that. slavery. No, it, it, they were Nebuchadnezzar ruled the whole land, just like there was a time when Egypt ruled the whole land. So Israel, Judah was destroyed, basically. Remember, mm -hmm. yeah. and all the all the all their young smart guys were taken away. And you got to remember. So it's like the 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 Persian captivity of of the land, like next one after that would be Alexander the Great, where he conquered from India to North Africa. So when you say captivity, it's, all of them didn't go to, to uh, Babylon, no. but they were under Babylonian rule. Right, it's not like how it was when they were in <clears throat> Egypt in captivity. Yeah. Okay. This is a more yeah. civilized captivity right. where you don't get to have your own king, but you and you don't you got to pay taxes, but you can still have a hierarchy of people. Yeah. It's so it's kind of like, um, have you ever seen? Um, After slavery, they were migrant form or what they call yeah, it? Yeah, uh, sharecroppers. Sharecroppers. Um, but that's not as civilized as this was. No, I mean um, you get to have your own government. Right. Mm -hmm. Just like in Israel, they had they had King Herod, remember? Yeah. So, but the the th the thing was, they the system was. We'll let you do your thing as long as you pay us. Right, and so it's 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 a it's like a caste system, yeah. um, type of thing. And I was um, the sound of music. I was thinking about that. Mm -hmm. How the guy uh, that she was working for, he he's still a, a a higher official. He got land, but at that time Hitler and them was over it. They still had people that was nobles, and still people that had good position. They had to play the role in order wow. to keep their their position. And I'm not comparing anybody to Hitler. I'm just talking about the movie. Right. But this was a different type of captivity. Like, they couldn't um, like when we were in Kings and they could overthrow the government and do all that, that wasn't happening. Right. They couldn't, they could govern to a point. 
but they still had to get permission. Permission to do. They still had to say, "My mother, may I?" And he said, "Yes, I will." That's the type of stuff they had to do. And they what, couldn't what breeds, self-govern. And what breeds the, the abuse is now. Okay, just think about it as a noble, but you're still considered a Jew in that captivity. You still have to pay taxes too. So what you would do is exact a tax on the people who pay taxes other than you. Yeah. Like Matt, think, yeah. About, think about Matthew. Tax collector. Tax collector. collector. That's why they yeah. didn't like tax collector. Yeah, he's like a tax collector. He was, Not only was he collecting for Caesar, but he collected for himself too. Mm -hmm. out of, from his own people. Because he couldn't collect taxes for, from a Roman citizen. He could only collect taxes from the Jews. So you basically getting your money from somewhere else, so yeah. you won't have to, you can still stay stay in your stay position. Yeah, yeah. So um, Nehemiah said, "No, no, we ain't doing this. We are giving this all back." Now, Venus, did Nehemiah? Now, is this Nehemiah? Has he went back yet and returned back? Is this like his second trip back? Is that is no? He this is his still his oh, first, first trip. His first okay. trip. However, it sounds as if, and doing my research, Nehemiah was the governor at this point. And he had some some funds. Okay. And protection, so he wasn't no poor person right. coming over here. So that's why he's saying, "I've been giving them money and taking." He will. We'll, let's, let's listen more what he's finna do. I'm gonna talk about it a little bit more. Go to verse twelve. Mm -hmm. Then said they, "We will restore them, and we will require nothing of them. So will we do as thou sayest." Then I called the priest and took an oath of them that they should do according to the. This promise. He said, okay, you're going to do all this lip service, but we finna make you promise. Mm -hmm. Because I know y'all. Go ahead. Also, I shook out my lap and said, so God shake out every man from his house and from his labor that performeth not this promise, even thus be he, sh he shaken out and empty. And all the congregation said, Amen, and praise the Lord. And the people did according to this promise. Because he said, yeah, and it's like, I, like I'm shaking out, I ain't got nothing. Let them have nothing if they don't keep their promise. And, and it's kind of funny. Where, where was that done the first time? Where all the congregation got together, listened mm -hmm. to the law, and said what? Uh, with jo uh, man, yeah, when uh, jo uh, Joshua said, Joshua, yep. he told him, "You y'all gonna violate? No, we gonna do everything. Yep. We yep. promise we gonna do it. We gonna remember. Ain't the remember last nothing." Words is, amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Uh huh. So let's finish this. Go ahead. Um, go to fourteen. Moreover, from that the time that I appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah. From the twentieth year, even unto the two and thirtieth year of Artaxas, the king, that is twelve years, I and my brethren have not eaten the food of the governor. But the former governors who had been before me had laid a burden upon the people and had taken of them food and wine besides forty shekels of silver. Yea, even their servants bore rule over the people. But I did not so do because of the fear of the Lord. So he says, I could have been like these other governors. Mm -hmm. I could have took a percentage. I could have took from y'all, but I didn't do any of that. Mm -hmm. Let's see what he did. Um, 16. Yea, also I continued in the work of this wall. Neither bought we any land, and all my servants were gathered there unto the work. Moreover, there were at my table 150 of the Jews, and rulers beside those who came unto us from among the nations that are about us. Now that which were prepared for me daily was an ox, one ox, and six choice sheep. Also fowls were prepared for me, and once in ten days store of all sorts of wine. Yet for all that's required, not I, the food of the governor because of the bondage was heavy upon this people. Think upon me, my God, for good, according to all that I have done for this people. So my person says, now what was prepared at my expense, he wants to make sure y'all understand this is at his expense. Mm -hmm. For each day was one ox and six choice sheep and birds, and every ten days all kinds of wines in abundance. Yet for all this I did not demand the food allowance of the governor, because the service was too heavy on the people. Remember for my good. So he shows what a good leader is. Mm -hmm. He shows that a good leader doesn't take from people who don't have. He could have took some land. 
He could have said, you're not going to give me everything. He could have been a slum lord, but he didn't. He worked, and he fed the people that he brought. He led by example. Correct. Um, and he also talked about how he brought people with him. Um, and so um, I wanted to talk about how you redeem a poor man. So let's go to Leviticus 25. 47. I'll make sure I say it for Yeah, 47. It says, if a stranger or a sojourner with your becomes rich and your brother beside him becomes poor and sells himself to the stranger, the stranger or the sojourner with you a member uh, with you or to a member of a strange clan, then after he is sold, he may be redeemed. One of his brothers may redeem him, or his uncle or his cousin may redeem him, or a close relative from his clan may redeem him. Or if he grows rich, he may redeem himself. He shall calculate with his buyer from year when he was sold himself to him until the year of Jubilee, and the price of his sale shall vary with the number of years. The time he was with his owner shall be rated at the time of a higher worker. If there are still many years left, he shall pay, he, um, shall pay proportionally for his redemption and sum in his sale price. If there remain but a few years until the year of Jubilee, he shall calculate and pay for his redemption in proportion to his years of service. He shall treat him as a worker hired by year by year. He shall not rule ruthlessly over him in your sight. And if he is not redeemed by these means, then he and his children with him shall be released in the year of Jubilee. For it is, it is to me that the people of Israel are servants. They are my servants who I brought of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And so... Basically, when Nehemiah is, and what this is showing is how you can redeem yourself from being a poor man. You can work off your debt, and and that this is this is a true testament of what you um, to being an indentured servant. An indentured servant can buy their freedom and be free. It's different than being somebody's slave because you don't have an end to it. An indentured servant, and even in here, you got in the year of Jubilee, is you're going to be free anyway, right? Every seven years. And every seven years. And you're going to treat them, you're not going to treat them like you're their master. You're going to treat them with respect. But it's kind of funny when you say that. A lot of people don't know, like, the year of Jubilee is actually our bankruptcy system, chapter seven. Yeah, chapter seven. It is. Yeah. So you get free from your debt. Mm. Get free from some debt. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Your student loans will not be free. But you're going to have to pay Um. So the theme is to show generosity, and that's what Nehemiah did. Nehemiah showed generosity. He led by example. And when we go back on the slide about his leadership, um, he. He maintained his focus. I mean, he serves. You serve your followers. You maintain your focus, and you um and you depend on on the Lord. That's what we're gonna be talking about in a minute. But Nehemiah was a good. When I say to me, he was an excellent leader because he led by example and he prayed about everything. Right? He's you know he said he talked to himself and he was like, no, nah, this don't even make sense. Okay. So before we leave chapter five, does anybody want to talk about that before we go to chapter six? Anything we want to talk about before we go into chapter six? So um, in chapter five, it talks about redemption. Can we relate that to Christ and how he bought, how he bought us? Yes, he bought us with a price, right? Yeah. And there was no interest on it, right? Right. Okay. We can talk about it. Explain what you want to talk about. You know, I just saw redemption in there a lot. How so? Um, no, I mean the word was actually mentioned in here. Redemption. Okay, where with with, with scriptures? Because it's not in my Bible, so I'm I'm, I'm not uh, saying it's wrong. I, I guess it's the Levit Leviticus the one we just read. Uh huh. Go ahead and tell me where, so we can go with you and see what oh, you yeah, got. Um, Leviticus. Uh-huh. Leviticus 25, 47. Uh-huh. Verse 48. Then after he is sold, he may be redeemed. 
Uh-huh. One of his brothers may redeem him, or his uncle or his cousin may redeem him. Mm-hmm. Or a close relative from his clan may redeem him. Or mm -hmm. if he goes rich, he may redeem himself. Amen. And that just reminded me of Christ. He bought us to buy back. That's what redemption means. I want, I, I'm going to go ahead and talk about this. So every, do everybody see the difference between the, the system of slavery during the Bible times and the system of slavery that we talk about? The child slavery. Chattel slavery and in a, in a form of indentured servitude is different. Oh yeah, exactly. Okay, so the difference is is that you know they they know where their kids got sold off to. They might not see their kids any longer, but it's still God provided a way for you to be not a slave because you shouldn't be a slave to anybody if you under the Jewish. I'm talking about Jews right now. They shouldn't. God didn't want them to be enslaved again. <clears throat> So when they even when they became Nebuchadnezzar came over them, the slavery was different. It wasn't the Egyptian slavery. Well, the no. part that you read about your brothers could buy you back, that's the part that's like Christ. Because mm -hmm. Christ is our brother. Right. You know, and our brother redeemed us from the slavery to sin. What are you trying to mm -hmm. okay. And the note says that redemption is a contractual agreement that existed in the slave culture off, offered by the potential for emancipation to an indentured individual under certain conditions. Slaves could be brought out of slavery or some other sort of redeemed status by family members or other interested parties who could pay their ransom price. The cost of buying him out of slavery was affected by, um, by, the, year, uh, by the Jubilee year when he could be set free. So there was a system set up on how you can re be redeemed. Or be set free at the seventh year. Uh, yes. So if I so if I bought a slavery indentured servant in year one, if somebody somebody redeemed him, then he'd have to pay me for the other six years. Mm -hmm. But if so, I guess it would be if you planned it right. You would you probably buy him like him six months to six. Yes. I buy him six. Away. Yeah, I'd be like I buy him at the six month. Six years, six month lines. I want to pay, pay that so much. Right. Right. Pay that much. How? But that's a difference. Um, and so it, it's funny how people try to use. Well, there was slavery in the Bible. Yes, it was. But, but it, they forget. It's a totally different. It's a yeah, totally different. Totally different. And they and they had rules in there. So we, I guess they miss Leviticus. Yeah. Right. And, and the and the slavery for Israel was God's punishment for the disobedience. Yeah. Yeah. They. You know. As history played out, God said, I'm going to bring another nation that's stronger than you, that's more wicked than you, to come against you. And God does that. I mean, that's how he punishes Israel all throughout. Their, right. Mm -hmm. You know, the Egyptians, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, then the Romans. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to go to chapter 6. And you know what? It, what what's a, I know this is not a story, but what's a good story, a good movie without somebody trying to set you up? Somebody always trying to plot against you. It's always some haters. It's always it's some inner haters. It's some outer haters. It's always some traps. You know, you always think of people just 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 dumb. And 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 this is what chapter six is. Everybody trying to get Nehemiah. Everybody trying to go after him. And of course, when we got on the scene, them three people. The man I can't never say his name right. Tobiah, right. Tobiah, Tobiah and Gershom. They all still plotting against him. Right? They're still fighting against him. Either way, they they need to leave him alone. So let's see what happens. Says <clears throat> now when um Sabah, Tobiah, and Grisham and the Arab and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there were no breach left in it, although up to uh that time I had not set up the doors and the gates. <laughs> um Sabat and Grisham sent me um sent to me saying Come, let us meet together at Hecaprim in the plain of Ono. But they intended to do harm for me. Now, my okay, so hold up. You just tried to you trying to kill me. I got to get people to uh cover all the uh the wall and have guards. And you think I'm finna go out and meet you? Okay, he really they really thought he was dumb. Okay, so then after that. It said, but I said, um, and I sent messages to him saying, I'm doing a great work. I cannot come down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and come down to you? 
And then they sent me four more times in this way, and I answered them in the same manner. But in the same way, Simon, for the fifth time, sent his servants to me with an open letter in his hand. So he didn't even seal it because he wanted him to read it. Mm-hmm. It, was, it is written, it's reported among the nations, and Gershom also says it, that you and the Jews intend to rebel. That's why you're building the wall. According to the reports, you wish to become their king. Now, they know they tried this already. Right. And, Conspiring even still against them with the people. Yes. So normally, that would be a sealed envelope. Envelope. But now you're leaving it open. So everybody, you can tell everybody. And you have also set up prophets to proclaim concerning you in Jerusalem. This is the king in Ju- Judah. And now the king will hear of these reports. So now come and let us take counsel together. Who now he can mean slander, right? Mm-hmm. If it was in says no, that's not slandered in defamation because it's in writing. Um, libel and defamation. So then I see him saying, No such thing as you say has been done, for you are inventing them out of your mind. For all wanted to frighten us, thinking their hands will drop from the work and it will be done. But now, oh God, strengthen my hands. Now the plot thickens. Now, when I went into the house of Shemaiah, the son of Delilah son of Methabel, who was confined to his home, he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple. Let us close the doors of the temple for they're coming to kill you. They're coming to kill you by night. Um, But I said, should such a man as I run away and what man such as I could go into the temple and live, I will not go in. And I understood and saw that God had not sent him, but he has pronounced a prophecy against me because of Tobiah Shabbat had hired him. So this is the problem. You now you you had an outer plot, now you had an inner plot, and now you're trying to do a trap. So this man has told him this is the problem. Now the man Shemaiah could go into the temple because he was a priest, but Nehemiah was not a priest. He was not a punk and he wasn't stupid. Okay? Nehemiah knew that only priests could go into the temple. Okay? Let's go to Numbers 18 and 7. Do me a favor, Steve, when you get to Numbers 18 and 7, read it. Numbers 18 and 7. Therefore, you and your sons with you shall attend to your priesthood for everything at the altar and behind the veil, and you shall serve. I give your priesthood to you as a gift for service, but the outsider who comes near shall be put to death. So he knew about that. Who got in trouble? Who got in trouble? I think their hand got cut off or something. Somebody got in trouble. It was Jeroboam thought he could go into the, um, go into the um to the uh, temple without permission. I do believe it was Jeroboam, and he got in trouble for going in there because he thought because he was king he could go in there, Mm -hmm. and you couldn't go in there. It was either Jeroboam or another king, but I know for a fact there was a king that went in there, and I I remember it in a minute. So Nehemiah knew that he wasn't supposed to go into the temple anyway. So the story goes where he was supposed to be cloaked and go inside the temple and they'll never look for him in the temple because can't nobody go in the temple. While he hiding, this this priest was going to kill him. Okay? So now this priest going to have him go in the temple knowing he ain't supposed to go in the temple. So now all his work he did that he said he did for God is for not. Mm -hmm. Because he knows he's not a priest. He's not supposed to go in there. You see how he tried to set him up? Mm -hmm. I'm like, how you going to just set this man up? And it's it's just, it bothers me. So you always going to find a, uh, (laughs) you going to find a Judas or somebody in in the realm to trap you. And so he said, he, he, um, let's see, he says, um, what voice first was I was? He said he wasn't going to run away. Because God and ordained this. What am I running for? Mm-hmm. I'm not afraid. He know that God was going to protect him. 
Okay, for this purpose, he was hired, then verse 13, that I should be afraid and act in a way and sin. And so they could give me a bad name in order to taunt me. Remember to buy and to buy, oh my God, according to these things that they did, and also the prophets and the diet and the rest of the prophets who wanted to make me afraid. So it wasn't just one of the, <laughs> the priests. He, they, he had a couple of people trying to make him afraid to stop him from doing the work. Mm -hmm. But how many people know if God ordained it, it's going to happen? Amen. Um, but with our God ordaining it, you're going to always have opposition. Always. Absolutely. Always. Amen. But you also have to, and you correct, but you also have to be as, as diligent as Nehemiah is to mm -hmm. consult God on what to yeah. do and ask for discernment. Mm -hmm. Ask for the Holy Spirit to help you decide what you need to do. Right. Thank because, God he had discernment enough to know because exactly. the person was a priest. He was somebody he knew. Right. But the but this priest was, he wasn't bright <laughs> because he knew that if Nehemiah went into the temple, he was going to get in trouble. I'm going to hide you, and they ain't going to look for you. They were cowards, too, I guess. Yeah. Because instead of just going straight at him and getting him, they kept with all these plots trying to get the people to turn against him. Well, they did try mm -hmm. to attack, and it didn't work. Didn't work. Well, that one didn't work, right? Um, And we also know that, of course, everything that uh, we will find out in a minute, that even among people that you call family or brothers, there's always somebody going to tell people business and, you know, updating the enemy of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay? So let's talk about this. So the wall was finished, verse 15. And on the 26th day of the month of Ural in the 52 days, and when all our enemies heard of it, all the nations around us were afraid. And felt greatly in their own esteem, for they perceived that this had been accomplished with the help of our God. Moreover, in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters to Tobiah, and Tobiah letters came to them. For many, um, for many in Judah were bound by the oath to, to him, because he was the son-in-law of Shanikakin, the son of Arai, and his son. Jonathan had taken the daughter of Michelin, the son of Bishop, as his wife. Also, they spoke of his good deeds in my presence and reported my words to him. And Tobias sent letters to make me afraid. Mm -hmm. So they sent letters. That, now you can see the, the family connection. So um, according to the commentary, it says, Nehemiah added a footnote that in the days of building the walls, the nobles of Judah refused to work. Remember, we talked about them. Mm -hmm. So these are the people. They were in alliance in correspondence with Tob um, Tobiah because although his ancestors were Ammonites, he had married into a respectable Jewish family. Shemaiah, um, Shemaiah was um, from the family of Arah, Ezra 2 and 5. And his son, uh, Jerahim, was the son-in-law of Mishlam, who in, shared in his work of building Nehemiah 3, 4, and 30. But according to 13 and 4, the high priest, Ishabib, was related to Tobiah, which is the Jewish name. The meddling of these nobles by trying to play both sides uh, though reports of Tobiah and Nehemiah 6 are only widening the breach as Tobiah escalated efforts to frighten the governor. So the plot was deeper than I assumed. They, cause those people, let's go back and talk. Let's we gonna we gonna name the people who didn't help. Remember we were uh, talking about the um, the uh, building of the uh, of the wall, the gates. the gates. Yeah, thank you. And we were talking about who who participated and who did not participate. And I do believe it was at, let me go back to my notes. If anybody finds it before I do, that's fine. It's in chapter three somewhere. It's in chapter three, yeah. Um, I think verse five. Yes. <laughs> um. And next to them, the Tetrakadites repaired, repair, um, but the nobles would not stoop to their to their lord. So these are the people that was plotting. Yeah. Okay? These were the people that was plotting against Nehemiah. You always find some snakes 
in the grass. And you got to remember, these are the same people that Nehemiah told that, that you didn't have nothing to do with us either. Uh huh. When they came and said we should, we can help. But now not Nehemiah. Uh, Ezra. No, uh, it wasn't Ezra who did it. It was a Roosevelt. Oh, the Roosevelt. Yeah. The he told him he oh, need their help. First came down with yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they was like, we can help you. And so they they coming after because he's like, I'm family. Why couldn't we help? Mm -hmm. But you know, as Ruth Bell said, y'all ain't pure, so y'all can't help. Okay. And so um, going back to Nehemiah, Nehemiah was like, you you gonna continue to come at me? But what for? The wall is completed. Uh -huh. Right? And as much as they kept saying I did good work, I gave the people their stuff back, I took, I let the poor stop being poor, I led by example, at the end of the day, you still gonna hate on me. You still gonna oppose me because you feel like this shouldn't happen. You gonna defame my name because anybody could have heard this. What if the king believed them? Right. But he believed in God, right? Um... Nancy, do you remember um we talked about it in um in in Kings the king that went into the temple and got in trouble for going in the temple and I believe got struck down Okay. His hand. His, yeah, his hand. Uh I thought it was Jeroboam, but I I might be wrong. The prophet came in and yeah. told him he oh, should be in there. That, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm asking you, do you remember? Mm -hmm. Do you remember who the king was? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember that. You remember it, the incident? But yes. Remember who. It wasn't a... Uh, it was early on. It was a... Uh, do me a favor and Google it, it real quick. Was, was it Uzziah? Uzziah. Uzziah. Okay, thank you. Uzziah. 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 I knew it was a king. Okay. I, I wasn't sure if it was Jeroboam no more, and, and, but I remember the story. Mm -hmm. So everybody knows that if you're, not, if you're not a priest, you're not supposed to go in there. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the whole point of Ezra cleaning house as well. Remember, if they could not figure out who you had a lineage, you're not supposed to, only Levites are supposed to be in there. And so when you, you even, you trying to set up Nehemiah, like Nehemiah don't know the rules. Nehemiah knew the rules. He wasn't going there. He said, y'all trying to kill me and cause me to sin. No, no, I'm not sinning. So as you can see, I will say this, because we're going to pick up a chapter seven next week. Then Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah is way more exciting to me <laughs> than Ezra was, but both of them have... Um, purposes so we we found out that out of the leadership prayer principles today he served uh served his followers he maintained his focus on building the um the wall he depended on the lord and you will see in chapter seven he's going to depend on god more but he is if we look at the principles of nehemiah of the leadership that's the person that we would you know other than jesus that's the person that we would we would follow because he exemplified what a leader does. Um, he depended on Lord. He teaches. Um, we'll talk about that. Celebrate well. Take ownership of the problems and mistakes. And we just saw that um, in chapter six. They presented a problem to him about not chapter six, chapter five. They presented a problem to him about hey, we ain't got nothing. We're doing all this work and we poor and our own people are pressing him. And he was like, you know what? I'm going to fix this problem. And to me, this is even worse than the inter... I mean, I'm not saying intermarriage was not wrong. But to me, putting poor people make them more poor when you can help them, to me, is worse. Taking advantage of your brother, to me, is worse. Um, however, that is a law. I'm not saying it's not wrong. Um, to give... Um, and to repeat the vision, repeat the vision, and um, we'll talk about the rest of them later. But I think that um, Nehemiah is showing what a leader does. He is taking accountability. Mm -hmm. He is showing, he's showing everything that a leader needs to have. All right? So, Heavenly Father, we come right now, God. We just thank you. We thank you for being able to see Nehemiah. 
in, in ways that we haven't seen them before. We ask you to cover us and keep us and guide us, protect us and heal us. Protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Protect us on the highways and the byways, God. Perfect, perfect, uh, protect us in the cars and protect us from our sins. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you for tuning in to the Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Church broadcast on the WITRN Network. Come join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time for Sunday Worship. Bible study is held on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We are located at 3006 North Lindbergh Boulevard Suite 711, St. Louis, Missouri, 63074. All are welcome and we look forward to seeing you soon.